Hi, everybody. It's really nice to be here with you again. I have uh, tried all summer to come on and um, send a message that might uh, be helpful to those who are grieving or uh, those who are on the caring journey, and I haven't been able to do it. Every time I tried, it was a dismal failure. My summer has been a bit bumpy and a bit of an emotional ride this uh, past several months. Uh, I traveled frequently out of state to be with my family as my brother-in-law was um, battling a terminal illness and, and passed uh, earlier this month. And although I was not his primary caregiver, obviously, uh, I was there to support my sister and during this time of uh, such an emotional struggle and and all that we can do sometimes is uh, be present, bear witness, um, do a little cooking, of course, that's always a big favorite of mine, uh, feed people when all else fails. But here I am and I want to share with you that his passing brought uh, some new insights and a new awareness uh, to me regarding our emotional bandwidth and why I was unable to be with you a little bit during this past summer. Uh, and I call it emotional multitasking. Uh, how much can we really do emotionally? And, and yes, uh, I, I was here uh, cooking and gardening and mowing and meeting with my clients. And for those things, I was fully present and grateful. But emotionally, I had one foot in Ohio uh, with concern and, and all the tension that goes around a situation that I described. So in, in these deep matters of the heart, which are so profound, we as human beings can only take on so much. We can do our daily duties, but emotionally, we really can't multitask. We have to pay attention to what our heart is saying to us. And anything more that we take on is this thing that I call emotionally multitasking. And multitasking, of course, is never effective. You know, and as caregivers, uh, we often believe, and, and even those of us who are grieving, we believe that we should be able to um, take on more, um, add on for our self-care. We should develop a, you know, a yoga practice or uh, take up a knitting class or uh, whatever it might be that might uh, enhance us and, and feel like we're caring for ourselves. And I have to admit, I've been, you know, one of the first people to say to clients, oh yes, you know, please take that on, you know, really that's part of your self-care and get back to me when you signed up. <laughs> and yeah. and I, I've changed my mind. I mean, sometimes it's appropriate, but often it's not. And if this resonates with you, if you feel like you beat up on yourself because you should be doing more about uh, taking care of yourself or having outside interests, it's okay not to do it. You know, caring for another requires an immense amount of uh, empathy, compassion, and energy on a daily basis. So the next time you feel like you should be, you know, pursuing old interests, check in honestly. You know, if you're feeling a, a sense of a low grade depression, maybe it's not depression at all. Maybe you're fighting with your own heart about, I should be doing X, Y, or Z. And just give yourself a break. Come into stillness. You know, don't try to take on more than you really can. And I have a suggestion today for a mantra that you might try if this is a struggle for you. Yes, I am doing enough today and I am doing enough every day. And this too will pass these feelings of uh, you know, depression and they will pass sooner and we can come back to neutral in our hearts when we don't fight back 
all the time beating up on ourselves. So please be gentle. Be gentle with yourself today and every day. Um, I send you uh, I send you so much care and understanding wherever you are on, on your journey, whether it's caregiving or in grief. And if I can help you at any time with a, a free call, please log into my website and book a call right there. My website is CherylHutto.com. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.